So you're starting to play Infection Free Zone. What should you pay attention to? What are the most important things to pay attention to? Let's have a look. This video is going to contain a couple of tips for you to get started quickly. Now, number one is pick your site carefully. An area, for example, like London might be a very nice town to try and defend. It has plenty of different locations to start from. One thing to note is that rivers, water, canal, no matter what sort of water body it is, the zombies can traverse it. So if you are thinking of starting on some sort of island fortress, you can. The problem is the Zeds don't really care about your island as such. They will just swim across. So pick your location carefully. An area like London, such as this one, might be very densely populated. Now that's a problem, because not only will you be facing more hordes, but also you might not have that much terrain to actually play on. Let's have a look at this specific map. Now here's that London map. Let's have a look. It is extremely densely populated. And it has a ton of buildings right on top of each other. This is bad, because it means it is much harder to defend. In this game, you can demolish most any building that you see. The problem is, it takes time. And time in this game is a resource that is actually quite scarce. There will be waves of attacks coming at you, mostly at night. And if you are busy trying to take down a building, such as the ICA Cinema, in order to make room for, for example, fields, or you're trying to put up a wall around it, it's going to take you a lot of time. And that time is something you do not have. So in this case, this map, I don't consider it that good. You could argue that maybe the Household Cavalry Museum here, it's a bit more isolated. And yes, you'd be right. But the problem then becomes, I need more buildings. I need to have, for example, a warehouse. I need to have a location for more people to live. That means we're going to have to defend this building and this one and that one, which means putting a whole wall around it. And then the game is going to go, oh, by the way, you also need a research facility. You'll also at some point want an arms factory. You're going to have to continuously expand your area. So an area such as this one is actually quite bad. Let's have a look at a better one. This is another map. This is the Templin map, one that the developers have suggested that you play on. And this is actually a bit more organized. The buildings are slightly farther spaced apart and are more easy to isolate. The game in the Templin map sets you up with an HQ already. You do not get to pick it. And this means that the buildings around you, well, some of these are going to be useful. Some of them, not so much. This abandoned shack over here, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be in real life. You can just tear it down. It's going to give you some resources, but beyond that, it's not useful. This little place over here could be a research lab. This building over here could make for a small warehouse. You can use these for storing your people, so giving them beds. And this is actually a bit easier to defend. The fields around the HQ can be used for farming, so this is actually a pretty good location. Aside from that, you also have a lot of secondary, let's say, locations for you to explore. There are buildings, um, and if you press V, you're going to get the research, or you're going to get the overview of what resources go is where. Uh, there's supposedly a lot of fuel in these locations. That is valuable for your vehicles, which you might at some point unlock. There's a farm building here, there's a pharmacy. You can get more medical supplies, you can get more fuel, you can get food from the supermarkets. There are quite a lot of very, very useful buildings around here. So a site like this one, like Templin, I think is an excellent location to start. So very important, before you start, pick where you want to go, like what is going to be a good defensible location. And if you can't find one, move on to a different map before you invest too much time into a location that's actually fairly indefensible. Next tip. Now that you've started, you have a couple of things that you need to do right away. You need to press V. V on your keyboard is going to give you all of these question marks. You don't know what's in these buildings, so they need to get scavenged. They need to get explored. And for that, you have squads. The game automatically sets you up with one squad, and I highly recommend that you get two more. Over here on the bottom left hand side, you see 36 for 40. That's your population. That's 36 means we have 36 people available to work because the other four are in squad number one. Now there is a bit of a problem. Your squad is going to use firearms. Your other squad, so let's say squad number two, is also going to use firearms. So now we only have two left, which means that squad three 
is going to have half the firepower. They only got two weapons, and the rest is melee. That's machetes. They don't do very well. But early game, that doesn't really matter. Because early game, you can just have these people scout out during the daytime and make sure that they are back at around 5 p.m. when it is nighttime. That's when you do not want your squads out there scavenging. Now, once you have your squads, you hold shift and you start right-clicking on these buildings. Just let them explore them. And if they find anything useful, they will put them in these squad resource slots. If the squad slots are full, they're going to come back to the HQ. And then they're going to drop off the resources and continue on to the next building. Now, in this pre-build that I have, this early access build, there are, sometimes is the bug where squads get stuck, if you will. They just clear a building, they scout it out, and then they stop. So sometimes you need to babysit your squads a little bit and figure out, hey, why are you not moving? Now, I'm going to do this with a couple of different squads in a couple of different locations, especially in the buildings around me, so that after I have scouted them out, I can turn them into something useful. One squad is going to go directly for food, which, according to the map, is here and there. And let's see. Um, this is medical supplies. There's another food store over there. Food is something that you need early game. And it is possible that you just get to survive for a couple of days. But right now, I only have food for two days. It goes down quick. Your food rations are consumed very, very quickly. So make sure that you get food. Thankfully, it's pretty early to find. Now, that's number one that you need to be doing quickly. Number two, start gathering resources. Over here, you have the area work menu. This is basically a tool that allows you to either gather bricks, metal, or wood. You're going to want to get a bunch of trees chopped down to get wood. This is going to be very useful for building walls. You do start with a little bit. You get 55 and 12 metal and no bricks, and no tools. So first priority is get these things chopped down. Get wood for your wooden walls. The Palisades, well, they're early game. They're not going to defend you a whole lot, but it's better than nothing. If you do not have these, then what's going to happen is, for example, you have the building here and maybe you have a uh, shelter over there. The Zeds will go directly to the buildings and start damaging the buildings. And those buildings go down quick. So make sure that you defend your buildings. Build wooden palisades. Give it the occasional wooden gate, which does come with a couple of guard towers. And make sure that you defend the place. But before you do that, get this resource. It is the most important thing that you can get early on. Once you've acquired some of the wood resources that you need, you're going to want to build a shelter. The shelter is going to give you a mood bonus. The people right now are happy to be finally out of their shelters, their underground basements, and they just want to be outside. But quickly, they're going to realize, well, this is nice, but we don't actually have a place to live. So right now, I get a worker's efficiency bonus. That's because my workers have a good mood. But that bonfire runs out in 68 hours. So in less than three days, I need to make sure that I have some other way of keeping this modifier up. Because the more efficient your workers are, the quicker tasks will get done. So one of the things that you can do in this game is turn any building into anything else. This abandoned building, pretty much right next to the HQ, is going to get turned into a shelter. I've already scouted it out with one of the squads. And if you click here, Adapt Building, you can actually get the shelter. It is a basic shelter. It's going to keep them warm and secure at night. Secure is questionable. Um, yeah, it will keep them warm, but if there's nobody actually guarding the place, it will not be very secure. So you might want to park one of your actual firearm squads in that building or close to it, if in such a case you do not have watchtowers yet. Now, what's going to happen at some point, depending on how you set up your workforce, is that you're going to see this blinking icon. It says, hold on, there's no workers for this job. I cannot actually execute this option. So... I'm going to take a couple of workers off of the assigned task of scavenging wood. And I'm going to make sure that they get to work here. You don't necessarily have to max out the workers. You can just spread them around as you need. And if, for example, this task is completed and this job still needs more, you're going to be able to do exactly that. The game is automatically going to assign more workers to this particular job. Keep your workers busy. They are very important assets. They're very important resources, if you will. Uh, it's human capital, for lack of a better term. 
So make sure that they're actually doing something. Because if they're not doing something, they're just feeding off of your food supplies. And those are dwindling pretty quick. So get to work adapting buildings to shelters, adapting buildings, for example, like this one, to a warehouse. Um, if you want to, you can also do a part of the building as you're adapting your buildings. So this one has a storage facility or a storage cap of 1,031, but it's going to cost me 35 wood. It's quite a lot. If, however, you hold left click as you drag over a building, you can expand it as you need to. So let's say early game, I might need another 300 and I can do that and just get this part of the building for 10 wood as opposed to spending all of the wood that I'm going to need to build the fences. So let's say I want to have a little bit here and that's going to adapt part of the building. And as such, you won't be spending all of your resources. So if you've got big buildings around, start with the shelter, start with the warehouse, but don't necessarily adapt the whole building. As you're going into your first night, keep these people busy as well. The squad members will keep working. The actual worker force will not. Now, you can micromanage this if you want to. And this means that, for example, when it's nighttime, you can create another squad. Keep in mind, it is just going to be a melee squad. They will not actually do anything against Zeds. But they can scavenge. And if you are in an area where you're fairly certain you're not going to get attacked, get them busy. Because the more these people actually work for you, the more resources that you're going to get. The rest of them, all the other workers, they will come out in the morning. The squad members seemingly don't need rest. They don't need to go to bed. They don't need to sleep. So keep them out there. Keep them busy and make sure that you get more resources for your starting settlement. After a bit of adapting some of the buildings, I now have my shelter, I have part of my warehouse, I have plenty of capability to store resources. I want to start thinking about defense. And I also want to start thinking about where I'm going to place my walls. Now this open field here can be very useful to do quite a bit of farming, but there are a couple of buildings that I really do not need. Some of these buildings are very small and might make for a very useful small building, like something that you only have one or two people working in, maybe a cookhouse, maybe something like a research lab. But some buildings are just trash. Take them down. They will give you resources. They won't give you a lot of them. But potentially more importantly, they will allow you a better field of fire. Because let's say I have this squad going here. Um, once they're in this building, you're going to see what their field of fire is. And their field of fire is currently very limited because of these buildings in the way. Which means that if the Zeds, the infected, come through here, they might use the buildings to get very close to my guys. And all of a sudden, I do not have range. I don't have my range advantage anymore. So start taking some of these buildings down, gather the resources from them, and then start building up your defenses. In this case, I am expecting that these defenses are going to go, or sorry, that these buildings are going to go down. And I'm going to start working on at least one wooden tower. My squad's early game can defend the colony or the infected free zone somewhat. But eventually, towers, and ideally metal towers, is where it's at. The problem is that metal is something that you don't get as easily as wood. The metal resource, I only have 12 of them. You can mine it, if you will. You can gather metal from the surrounding area. But it's really only going to give me 36. So early game, towers. As for defenses, um, let's say I want to use this field. I might want to use this building, but I'm not sure yet. I'm much more likely to take this down and gather all the resources from it. So in that case, let's say I want to have a wooden tower in an area with a good field of fire, so let's say there. This is making sure that I don't have to build my tower, for example, let's say here, and then figure, huh, well, it's time to expand. I'm going to have to build it all the way over there. Get this thing early and put up a little bit of wall around it. This is going to make sure that your tower doesn't take damage very quickly. And more importantly, it will allow the rest of your squads to use the palisades as sort of makeshift cover. This way you'll be able to use your squads from behind the wall and make sure that they don't immediately start taking damage. Now of course the infected will walk around the wall, but it's going to mean that they take some time doing that. And while they're doing that, this tower is going to engage them. 
If you find yourself getting attacked at night before your defenses are up, you're gonna have to make do with the buildings that you have. Pick buildings with good line of fire. This building is one that I was kind of forced into. The building over here would be even slightly better, although then again, this building and potentially its neighbor gets in the way a bit. These buildings over here are kind of the problem right now, and the Zeds are doing exactly as I predicted. They're coming from this angle, and right now my guys cannot shoot them, even though they do have firearms. So I'm going to have to wait until this infected group is getting into range, but I am kind of unable to really deal a whole lot of range damage to them. So taking this building or that building would have actually been more beneficial. Over here, we got a very good field of fire. This is almost a 360 coverage. Because of where they are in the building, they cannot actually shoot out the, let's say, the right side of the building. But that's fine, because the infected are coming from the left. The HQ here would also be a good position, and that's something that is likely going to get attacked by the Zeds. Now, early game, this is something you'll have to accept. You will get attacked, and you will not have plenty of defenses up. In that case, what can work is kiting. Have one of your squads, in this case squad 4, the one armed with machetes, just leave the building. And they will kite the Zeds immediately. At which point my actual weapon squad can engage the enemy. If they're not too busy, that is. I'm not sure exactly why they're not engaging. I think they were on the wrong side of the building. Once I right-clicked on these, they actually moved into the building, into an angle where they could engage the enemy. Now, some of your squads, as they are defending themselves, will take a bit of damage. Thankfully, it doesn't take a whole lot of time to recover this little bit of health. And try to keep your people alive, because they gain veterancy, and with that veterancy, they gain more shooting range, they get better scavenging. You want to keep your people alive at all costs. There will probably be events where it's impossible and you'll just have to try and make do with the people that you have and, well, you will lose the occasional squad, so be it. But ideally, keep these people alive as much as possible. Okay, <laughs> I was planning on scavenging, but there's another hoarding coming. Let's not. In this case, this horde is pretty sizable. There's 18 humanoids in there. I'm not touching that. It's too many and it would be a waste of rounds for now. I have plenty of ammunition, but it goes pretty quick. Like essentially, I have 1700 rounds of ammo, but I don't have any additional firearms, and my tower is just going to be shooting, well, wooden arrows. That's the level of firepower that I have right now. Speaking of, I think they actually managed to take this down. So make sure that, um, yes, yes, make sure that if you're building a defensive measure, you actually keep this thing and build it in one go. Once you've built a tower, you might find that your defenses are a little inadequate. The game is going to try to slot in a pistol. If you have more advanced gear, like an assault rifle or a shotgun or a sniper, by all means. However, early game, you might not have that many guns available, so you're just going to have to go with bows and arrows. It's primitive, it also does not take any ammo. That is very useful, but keep in mind that this is basically a decoy. The real firepower is going to have to come from your squads. If you want to do that the other way around, make sure that you have your squad turn in their weapons. You can have them unequip these and then get the firearms delivered to the tower. The tower will then also take ammo from the ammo storage and start defending itself with guns. It does work, it is expensive. Early game, what I tend to do is build a wooden tower, or ideally several. And once I see that this part of the defense is coming under attack, I start sending a squad over there. And the squad actually has more firepower because they have not only sometimes experience, but also they got four pistols as opposed to just two. Which means that my walls don't take as much damage. My squad is faster to rearm because it's going to go back to the HQ if it needs to. And I get um, potentially less damage to the walls, more firepower, and I just find it overall much more efficient. Next up, time to start making our own food. In order to do that, you will need a very particular resource, and that is tools. You might not always be able to find those easily on the map. If you are unable to find them on the map, recommend that you go for research first. Get a research center, which you can unlock by gathering a couple of the uh, educational materials or scientific materials. 
Uh, once you bring those back, it's going to basically tell you to build a research lab. But once you have the research lab, skip the basic antenna. The game is going to recommend that you build this. Don't care about it. Don't build it. Go for construction and build the tool factory. That's where you'll be able to build your tools yourself. If you do have tools, there are a couple of ways that you can go about building food. We have the basic fields, and we have the cookhouse, and we have the barn. Now, this is basically a tiered system. The cookhouse is where you actually put your people to work to start cooking, and they take resources from the barn, the field, or both. Let's set this up as the cookhouse. Let's turn this one into a field. And keep in mind that fields do need a bit of room. They do need a bit of room. They need four wood, they need two tools, and they need two staff. So your workers are going to be busy over there. Meaning that your production speed might go down a little bit. Now I've found that putting these fields down can be a little finicky. And well, so be it. Uh, try not to have them too far away from anything else. Let's say the distance to the cookhouse should be fairly limited because it's going to speed things up. The building over here I am demolishing. Um, I can actually turn this into a barn. So maybe I can still do that. Actually, no, it's already being mostly deconstructed. So once you have this, you'll be able to start building up your own food. I'm also going to set up a barn. It is, again, going to serve in um, a manner where you can... Well, you can either use the whole building or you can use a bit of the building. I think the whole building is going to be fine. The problem that I'm slowly but steadily starting to run into is as I'm expanding my food production, I'm going to need more area to defend. So I'll have to build more watchtowers, get more people with guns, make sure I have more ammo, and eventually get more workers. And that's where the antenna comes in, but that's later. So get your fields, get your cookhouse. That's the priority. This... Not really a priority. Once you have your fields built, your cookhouse built, and your barn, you can decide how you want to have these things work together. Early game, you can forego the barn if you don't strictly want it, because it is a bit of a luxury item that you might not even be able to use all of the things yet. The fields produce grain. They tend to do just three grain, although this can be improved with research. If you go to the food research, you have farming, and you can research this to increase the, increase the crop yield. This is going to take you just two books. In the research, you can also find fertilization techniques, which is going to turn um, the use of fertilizer on on farms. The fertilizer is then going to take a field and turn it from three production into nine, but it does use fertilizer every single time. So you're going to be getting a lot more off of your one field. Maybe you can even make do with one field if you don't have that big of a colony, but you will need fertilizer, and that's where the barn comes in. The barn takes one grain and turns that into two meat and one fertilizer. So you're essentially using the fertilizer from the barn to boost the efficacy of the fields and then turn potentially more of the fields into food using the first recipe. The cookhouse cannot do both. You're going to have to pick which one you want. You can, however, queue these production cycles by the looks of it. It says press to queue or dequeue. I'm not sure if this is going to be the next one. The game doesn't say that, and holding shift doesn't seem to indicate that it's first going to do this one, and then the other one, and then back. So I'm assuming, and for micromanagement purposes as well, that you're just going to be picking one of these two recipes. Early game, you can just make do with this, although it's not going to give you that much. Later game, um, if you get a field that produces 9 every 20 hours, well, um, sorry, every 14 hours, it's even faster. That is, of course, going to give you a lot of grain, but you might need a slightly bigger cookhouse because this production takes 20 hours. So I'm going to be sitting on loads and loads and loads of grain before this thing completes one cycle. Keep the size of the cookhouse in order. If you want to expand your food production even more, get the fertilization techniques once you have enough research points or scientific materials. And eventually you can also get food preservation and efficient cooking. But I'd say that's much, much more late game. Food preservation gives you the cannery, extends the shelf life of food. Efficient cooking just means that it's getting get more efficient in the cookhouses, in the kitchens that you have. So that is how food production works. Early game, get a field or two, get an okay sized cookhouse and you should be good for at least a little while. If you want to get more guns, you're going to have to look for a building that actually has these things in them. 
Not all of them are going to have a guarantee for a good weapon, but even a handgun can be very beneficial. Now, what you're looking for is this symbol. In this case, it's a uniformed services facility. You can find ammo, pistol, as well as an assault rifle. Problem is, in this case, it's a bit of a walk. Thankfully, I already have access to a car, and most of the time, the game is going to give you one pretty early game. Well, it's not strictly going to give you one. It doesn't spawn here. You're going to have to find it. But I can actually go with this vehicle right across the map and have these guys scout out the building over here. So you're basically looking for an icon that looks like a sheriff or a cop icon. And in this case, I can just right-click the car. They're going to scavenge the place, bring back any guns. And that is definitely going to be very helpful in keeping, for example, in my case, Squad 4, the melee squad, alive. Or to upgrade the firepower of the main tower that I have. Keep in mind, though, you need ammo. And up until the point where you actually have your own arms production or um, your own capability of building weapons or ammo, well, ammo is limited. I don't exactly know how limited. I haven't actually completed scavenging the entire map. But expect that there will more likely be more zombies than you have ammo. In my case, scavenging this building, it gave me a lot of ammo. So I found 12 ammo in this one abandoned building. That's what you're looking for. It might not always give you weapons, but ammo itself can be incredibly valuable. So save your ammo, get more of these buildings, just take a while to look around the map, and if you have a car, prioritize these buildings. Get your firepower, get your guns, Especially, I suppose, on American maps, you might find these a little easier than on the European ones. It's also perfectly viable to get your guns, well, second-hand. There are a couple of enemy groups around. Sometimes you're going to have multiple, sometimes you're going to have one. I already had a bit of a skirmish with these guys, but they're still around. In this case, because of the threat, these are fire-armed people. I am going to bring in two squads. Squad 1 is here, Squad 2 is going to be joining as well, and these two together should have very little issue dealing with these squads. This is going to give you guns. More guns, always better to have. There we go. There's one of them down, and there's the other one. Now, it is not going to automatically pick up these guns, so you're going to have to do that yourself. And once you have them, you're going to be able to bring these back to base. And all of a sudden, I have an additional pistol here and a little bit of ammo. They were already carrying some things. I'm going to tell the other squad to pick up these guns. Let's bring them in. There we go. Bring them back to base. And get your guns this way. Of course, if the enemy is armed with assault rifles, well, your pistol guys might be in for a bit of a tough fight. So be careful what exactly it is that you're engaging. Later game, if you have sniper rifles, for example, that would be a phenomenal way to go about things. With the, these additional pistols, I can start equipping my tower. I can get the additional squad, additional firepower. So let's bring squad four all the way over and get them the firepower that I need. And yes, I should have had these guys out working. There we go. Squad four went back to the HQ and went, aha, guns. And with that, they now have their own firepower. So that's how you can get more guns. Now, that's a bit of the starter tips on this new game, Infection Free Zone. I hope that your colony is going to have a long and prosperous life. Uh, it is not an easy game, I have found. Especially once that day four hits, it's very possible that you're going to start taking some casualties. And things can snowball from there. So stay safe, keep your people alive, and good luck building out your infection-free zone.